Howdy, I'm Baxter Black. Welcome to my little rancho. May not look like much of a cow outfit to some of y'all, but what we got to say applies just about anywhere you're running livestock. Living on a farm or a ranch is a wonderful way of life, but it can be dangerous. Probably every one of y'all has been bruised or bumped around in some way or another, and we all know somebody that's been hurt a lot worse. Research over the last several years has shown some alarming injury statistics. Statistics that are the same on a large operation or a small one. Cattle are responsible for 61% of all injuries caused by farm animals. A 1997 Oklahoma State University study of Oklahoma cow-calf producers found that more than 80% of the injuries caused by cattle involved the extremities, legs, arms, hands, and fingers. And in that same study, Producers themselves told researchers that fully one half of all animal-related injuries were the result of human error. Human error? <laughs> well, much of that human error is just errors in judgment and trying to guess what the animal's going to do. But it ain't that complicated. You just need to know some basics in animal behavior. While animals have the same basic senses as humans, an animal's perception of its environment is very different from that of human perception, and that means their reactions will be a whole lot different, too. When moving cattle, there are three key elements to keep in mind. One, gather and move cattle quietly. Two, move them in small groups. And three, understand their behavior. Now let's take a look at how these elements can make handling safer for you and your cattle. Cattle is an animal who's motivated by fear. When the animal gets all excited in the squeeze chute, it's because it's scared. It's not because it's aggressive, it's because it's scared. Cattle that are all agitated and excited are cattle that are gonna be more dangerous to handle. Once an animal gets all upset and excited, it takes 20 to 30 minutes for that heart rate to go all the way back to normal. We need to work on making sure they don't get excited in the first place. Move small groups. Never fill your crowd pen all the way full. I recommend filling your crowd pen that leads up to your single file chute half to three quarters full. Cattle need room to turn. Don't squash the crowd gate up tight on the cattle. Give them room to turn. The flight zone is the animal's safety zone. It varies from no flight zone at all in a tame show animal or in a dairy cow to maybe over 100 feet in a very wild range cow that never sees people. Now the best place for the person to work is on the edge of the flight zone. And how do you know whether you're inside or outside the flight zone? If you walk out onto the pasture and the cattle are all turning and looking at you, that means you're outside the flight zone. You take a step towards the cattle and they turn away, then you're inside the flight zone. Now oftentimes you'll have an animal in a chute rear up. And the reason why they're rearing up is because there's, because there's a person deep in the flight zone. Now what you need to do when that happens, you need to back up. Get out of the flight zone. Don't run up there and try to push the animal back down. In addition to these three key elements, there are other cattle behavioral traits that you should know. Cattle are herd animals. And when they get separated from the herd, they can get very agitated and very upset. There's been some very serious accidents that have occurred when a lone animal was left in the crowd pen by itself. All the other cattle had gone up to single file shoot. One animal is left by herself, she's frantic, wanting to get back with other herd mates. Somebody gets in with that animal, somebody's really likely to get hurt. Some cattle are really bad kickers. And you get behind them in the chute and they'll kick you. And cattle that tend to be the worst kickers are cattle that have been worked with dogs. They've had a dog nipping at their heels and the cattle kick at the dog. Then you get behind the cow to push her up the chute and she kicks you. One of the ways to prevent kicking problems is to not use dogs. Cattle have a point of balance at the shoulder. If you're behind the point of balance, the animal will move forward. If you're in front of the point of balance, the animal will move backwards. Now one thing you need to avoid doing is standing in front of the animal's shoulder and trying to poke the rear. It, it, the animal doesn't know what to do. Another handy tip that you can use is walking back by cattle to make them move up a single file chute. If you have a line of cows in a single file chute, and you want them to go this way, if you walk quickly back by them in the opposite direction, as you pass the shoulder of each animal, it will move forward in order to move away from you. 
The mistake that people make is they just keep winding up the tail. So the cow's moving and you're still hurting the cow. You want to reward the cow for being a good cow the instant she moves forward. This is especially important with breeding animals that you're going to be handling many, many times. Beyond understanding and using animal behavior to decrease injury risk, your working facilities can also help minimize that risk. Crowds, working pens, and facilities are made to confine cattle safely and efficiently for close observation and to perform those routine health and management things we do every fall and spring and whenever they get a pink eye or we gotta handle something. But to do the job safely and efficiently, these facilities should be properly matched with a specific cattle operation. In other words, the tool has to fit the job. Let's take a look at a typical 50 head unit uh, that, would be, that would be fairly uh, representative of an operation for moderate sized uh, cow-calf unit. Uh, this particular unit has two holding pins and then it has a 12-foot alley that approaches a crowding area. One important feature is that the alley uh, has a crowding gate that, that extends the width of the crowding alley. The gate has solid sides so that cattle cannot see out. And another important feature is that the crowding gate has a backstop uh, so that in case the cattle pressure the gate from the inside of the crowding pen, uh, the, the gate will not come back on the operator. One other feature of this particular facility is it has a concrete base inside the crowding pen to improve the footing for the cattle. Of course, the crowding pen has a curved arrangement so that the cattle flow easily into the curved single file chute for the cow. Now that we've looked at the uh, crowding pin, let's take a look at the single file chute and the squeeze chute itself. Now we're over at the other side of the working facility where we have a curved single file chute, an inline electronic scale, palpation cage, and, and squeeze chute. Some of the important features of the single file chute are that it does have a curved structure, of course, which improves the flow of cattle. It also has solid sides that are sloped, and the slope is important because that discourages cattle from turning around in the chute, and it's especially effective for lighter weight cattle. This chute also incorporates uh, jump bars or overhead restraints, which discourages cattle from rearing up, turning over uh, backwards, which can create injury to the cattle as well as to the handler. We would like to uh, improve upon the backstop in this single file chute. Uh, of course, the backstop uh, keeps cattle from backing up while they're in the chute. We'd like to put it inside the chute rather than using the bar as is used here because if the cow backs up, the handler is between the bar and the chute. He can find himself pinned. Another uh, item to consider is that a person wants to make sure that uh, if you reach in, to encourage cattle to move forward, that you have plenty of clearance between your arm and any pipe or bar behind you because if a cow backs up and your arm's in the chute, you can find yourself with a broken arm pretty quick. Here at the squeeze chute, there are several things that we want to point out. First of all, it's very important for the operator to understand uh, what each of the levers are intended to do and how each of these mechanisms work simply because when injuries occur, they'll often occur with the first few uh, cattle that are worked because uh, the operator does not have a good understanding of those and how they operate. Also, uh, as, with many, as with most squeeze chutes, uh, got an overhead bar here uh, that's pulled down to squeeze the cattle. Of course, that uh, can be a potential head knock. This chute has an adjustable bottom, uh, which is intended to uh, be adjusted for lighter weight cattle. Those extensions at the bottom of the chute uh, can turn into uh, uh, stumblers if, if you're not careful. The backstop on this chute is operated by a rope. Just want to make sure that that rope is kept in good condition so that uh, when you pull hard on it, you don't wind up on the, on the ground. Also, uh, this working area incorporates a table to hold vaccines and equipment. Just uh, would like to maybe improve on the uh, ground surface here because we have a 
concrete surface and the ground surface that creates uh, sort of an unlevel area. In addition to construction and design, another really important aspect of these facilities is regular and proper maintenance. It's really important that all gate latches be kept well maintained and one of the most important things for safety is maintenance of the latches on the squeeze chute. That your ratchet latches and other devices that work the head gate and the squeeze are kept well maintained because if those latches uh, slip, you can have a bar fly up and hit a person. You could have a cow just come out in somebody's face while you're working on it. Keep your squeeze chute well maintained. It's also very important to have non-slip flooring in a cattle handling facility. It's impossible to handle animals quietly if they're skidding around and they can't uh, keep their footing. You know, cattle that are skidding around tend to be agitated, excited cattle, and that may increase the probability of having an accident. One thing I recommend is uh, not getting in the crowd pen that leads up to the chute. There's been a lot of bad accidents with that. Uh, also, you want to, as much as possible, avoid getting in a single file chute with the cattle. Now, if you've got palpation doors, well, then that you open up your palpation door. That closes off the rest of the chute. That's just fine. If you're planning to build new facilities or modify existing ones, Oklahoma State University has information that can help. Contact OSU's Department of Biosystems and Ag Engineering, 214 Ag Hall, Stillwater, Oklahoma, and the zip code is 74078. Or you can call area code 405-744-5425. Handling cattle doesn't have to be a dangerous activity for people or for animals. Using a little common sense, knowing how they'll react, maybe a little applied animal psychology can assure that you won't become just another injury statistic. And with that, I'm going to mount old Trigger here and ride off into the sunset. Happy train. Wait for me,